Hey there science fans! Welcome to another exciting journey into the world of technology. Have you ever wondered how your smartphone works? Or what makes it so smart and capable of doing so many things at once? Or what makes your computer tick? How does it manage to process so much information so quickly and efficiently? The answer is hiding in plain sight microchips. These tiny marvels are the unsung heroes of modern technology. Microchips are like tiny brains that power almost everything around us. They are the core components that make our devices smart and functional. They're in our phones, cars, TVs, even refrigerators. These little chips are everywhere, making our lives easier and more connected. But where do these amazing little things come from? How are they made and what materials are used to create them? Believe it or not, it all starts with something you probably see every day. Sand. Yes, the same sand you find on beaches and in deserts. Yep, that's right. Sand is the main ingredient in microchips. It's fascinating to think that such a common material can be transformed into something so powerful. It contains a special element called silicon, which is the heart and soul of all things electronic. Silicon is extracted from sand and then purified to create the microchips that power our world. Let's take a journey together to see how we get from ordinary sand to powerful microchips. We'll explore the fascinating process that turns simple grains of sand into the tiny brains of modern life. Okay, so we know sand is important, but how do we actually get the silicon out? It's a fascinating process that involves some serious science and engineering. Well, it starts with heating the sand to really high temperatures. This isn't just any heat, we're talking about industrial furnaces that can reach extreme levels of heat. We're talking over 1,700 degrees Celsius, that's hotter than a pizza oven. Imagine the intensity of that heat, enough to melt the sand completely. This intense heat melts the sand and we mix it with other ingredients like carbon. The carbon plays a crucial role in the chemical reactions that follow. This mixture goes through a chemical reaction, and voila! We're left with something called metallurgical grade silicon. This silicon is extracted in its molten form and then cooled down to solidify. It's not quite ready for electronics yet, but it's a great first step. This metallurgical grade silicon will undergo further refining processes to become the high purity silicon used in electronics and solar panels. The journey from sand to silicon is truly remarkable and essential for modern technology. Now, metallurgical grade silicon is pretty cool, but it's still got some impurities hanging around. Think of it like this. You wouldn't want to eat cookie dough with eggshells in it, right? Same goes for silicon. To make super pure silicon, we use a clever process called the Siemens process. It involves reacting the silicon with hydrogen chloride gas to create something called trichlorosilane. Don't worry too much about the name, just know that this process removes almost all the impurities leaving us with something called electronic grade silicon. Okay science fans, it's time to get crystal clear. Today, we're diving into the fascinating world of silicon crystals, the backbone of modern technology. We've got our super pure silicon, but it's still in a powdery form. This powder is the raw material, but we need to transform it into something much more structured and solid. To make microchips, we need a solid piece of silicon with a very special structure. Enter the Czochralski process. This method is named after the Polish scientist John Czochralski, who invented it in 1916. This process involves melting our pure silicon in a crucible at extremely high temperatures. Then, we slowly pull a seed crystal out of the molten silicon. The seed crystal acts as a template for the silicon atoms to arrange themselves in a perfect, orderly structure. As the crystal is pulled upwards, it pulls the molten silicon with it, creating a big beautiful cylinder of single crystal silicon. This process requires precision and patience, as the speed of pulling and the temperature must be carefully controlled. This cylinder is called an ingot, and it's the foundation for all microchips. From this single crystal ingot we can slice thin wafers that will eventually become the microchips in our computers, smartphones, and countless other devices. Isn't that amazing? 